My name is uh, Usama Zaid. Um, I am the CEO of Wow Animation, the studio behind uh, the production. And I am also the uh, lead writer and director for Agent Ali Season 3. Surprise, mostly, I think. Um, of course, you know, it's you, you, you uh, submit for, for <laughs> this kind of uh, award competition, but you don't really, you know, uh, expect uh, to, you know, become the winner. I mean, it is a, a very prestigious award, and, you know, the, the other nominees are also, you know, big names, big titles. So, and we've been nominated before, I think, uh, quite a while back, uh, but we didn't win. So, you know, uh, to, to receive the, the award this time around, I think it's, it's a huge honor because, you know, it's uh, all great nominees. Um, yeah, it's very humbling. Well, I, I think as a creator, it gives us a certain validation of our creation. Um, I mean, you know, we, Agent Ali, we've, we've quite established the brand uh, through the first two seasons in our movie. But season three is actually our first time partnering with uh, Disney Plus Hotstar. Uh, prior to that, it's always been, you know, us and Primeworks as partners, uh, but this is the first time we, we're entering into partnership with, with uh, Disney Plus uh, Hotstar. And I think, you know, it's it's quite a, a big deal for us, you know, being a, a platform that house uh, so many amazing titles, so many amazing brands. Um, you know, you have the, the Marvel brands, uh, Pixar, all the Disney animation. Um, so it's it was very daunting at first, but I think once you know the season was out, uh, it was um, it was nice to to witness how how it was well received. You know, uh, with Agent Ali, we always have uh, our fan base uh, engaging with us on the social media, right? Um, and I think to see that you know we go to the extent of of bagging such a prestigious award. It, it does fit into the, the satisfaction uh, of creation, you know, because when we create, uh, it's all about uh, that, you know, um, that hope that we'll be able to, to connect with the audience, right? Um, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, we don't do it for the award, but getting the award, it, 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 it adds up to the validation, you know? Um, and I think uh, professionally, uh, I feel you know winning winning awards like this would help us gain recognition because it's an international uh, award. It's regional, so uh, winning the award, I think, it, it would help uh, us, you know, being uh, identified as as uh, one of the the uh, player amongst amongst or the, you know one of the big players uh, in the region, and hopefully this will help. Uh, open up more opportunities uh, for us in the future, you know, um, in, in uh, you know, the intention of going global and things like that. I, I, I hope uh, all this will, will play into, into all the mission that we have in store. I think um, the team has grown incrementally you know like uh, of course when we started with season one um, it was the studio's uh, first uh, creation right so i think it was our first time uh, coming together as a team and it was a younger team like you know many of us uh, are, are first time uh, creator and then um, a lot of our team members also you know uh, the composition of the team we have uh, uh, while we have some seniors we also have a number of, of fresh graduates in, in the team um, so I think you know as as we move along um, the storytelling side I think we we grow more mature um, and as the story becomes more solidified you you understand the world better the characters better uh, of course you also have the limitation of, of the logics that you have set up before 
but I think uh, that also becomes like you know a challenge for us to to try to be creative within that limitation. Uh, and I think in terms of of the team's maturity in terms of production, uh, we can see the growth in in how they they've increased uh, the quality benchmark uh, for the show, especially after uh, the movie that that uh, were produced um, after season two, right? So coming off of a movie production where we uh, actually you know did uh, I think a very substantial uh, growth. In terms of quality, because you know, moving from from uh, TV to to the big screen, uh, it was definitely something that we aimed for to to ensure that you know it has that that uh, wow factor, it has that you know uh, feel of a of a feature. So coming off of that, uh, going back into the TV series, I think the team sort of like had been on this journey of, of producing something bigger and, and more challenging. So now you come back, you can see how the the growth uh, fits into into the, you know, uh, the, the next uh, project kind of thing. So you can see that the animations are better, uh, the technology uh, usage. And for the season three, we actually uh, assemble a new team for, for the effects like prior to this most of the effects that we use are, are you know um, done in post so it, it looks more like a, a flat and, and added on top of the image that, that has already been rendered but for the season 3 uh, a lot of the, the uh, effects are done inside the, the 3D software itself so it becomes uh, more realistic in terms of how it interacts with the characters within the scene When the pandemic hits, we didn't expect uh, that you know we'll be working outside the studio for as long as we did, um, and you know, I think uh, because we've we've grown very accustomed to the to that studio environment uh, where you have like you know uh, peer to peer feedback, you have impromptu discussion because everyone's in the same place, right? You you're always feeding off of each other's energy. And it was much easier to to get uh, updates, like you know what everyone's working on, and and all the communications were much more seamless, right? But working from home was was definitely something else. The the entire season three was done, uh, you know, from home. Um, I I find it was very challenging to to you know in terms of communication. It's it's. Uh, there's there's a lot of lag in in communication, and you can see the difference uh, in the energy uh, in the and it translates into the output. You know, like when when you have the team together and and they they're always um, I'll say bouncing off each other's idea and and guiding each other in in, in pushing their works. Uh, you see, you know, the output becomes more seamless. Uh, but when you work from home. Uh, it becomes a struggle to to, to you know you, you it, it required more back and forth uh, in order to to get to the level that we need, um, and I think that put uh, a damper into into the productive into the studio's productivity, so to speak, right? Um, but yeah, I'm glad like uh, we managed to to finish uh, everything and and have it out. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm grateful that, <laughs> that that is finally out and done, kind of thing. Um, and I think being in the in the uh, COVID situation, uh, the the pandemic situation, uh, financing also become uh, a challenge because you know everyone's uh, are very. I would say everyone's very careful with with spending money because you know you know the economy is going to take a toll on this. Um, so it goes the same with our studio. There, there, there were times when, when you know, it, it became like uh, very difficult to to uh, ensure that everything is uh, running smoothly due to financing issues, kind of thing. Um, and of course, uh, working remotely from home, away from each other, um, it become more difficult. Uh, I would say when it comes to to doing the creative, like like for example, when when we want to write, 
but the writers room is not happening physically it's happening it's happening like uh, the energy when when you're bouncing off the idea and you don't have like you know your walls and the whiteboard around you it it, it becomes very different right um so yeah that was also uh, i think uh, one of the uh, thing that we had to overcome uh, you know in, in order to deliver the 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 series um well i th- uh unlike many other peers in the industry that i've met and spoken to um animation didn't come as naturally like uh, i i didn't know that i wanted to do animation when i was younger right it, it wasn't until uh, my uni days that i i feel that i found a calling kind of thing like uh, when when i tried doing the first animation and failed and tried again <laughs> and, and you know like uh, put in like hours of practice and then finally see the output and getting reaction from from the animations that i've done um that i finally felt like uh you know oh this is something that i could actually be good at you know it's like you didn't know you have the talent but when you found it, it it suddenly felt like everything makes sense kind of thing you know all those hours spent uh watching cartoons playing games reading comics like all this suddenly becomes a possibility of uh, like wait a minute i can actually do this for a living now kind of thing rather than <laughs> so uh yeah i think for me like it was it was sort of like a moment of realization that that uh sort of like called me to to get into animation um and i think uh the desire to create comes from uh experience experiencing uh great uh stories or great content like like you know that feeling growing up i i feel like they there've been moments like when when i've uh, watched the movie right like you spend uh like 90 minutes or 2 hours watching a movie uh, or maybe like follow like a like a animation series um you spend your your time uh consuming that right and by the time you're done with it you sort of like has have this feeling that that something inside you sort of uh change a little bit like you've been inspired by what you watch uh, like i felt like uh, i have been moved by by certain show certain stories certain characters um and when we you know uh, as, like founded the studio um that sort of like become the the vision of the studio I always tell my team you know the, at at the at the core at the, at the heart of of our animation is is the desire to move the audience uh you know by by creating like um, beautiful animation and meaningful stories that that you know people could watch and and be inspired to to uh, carry on uh, you know like something that they that they can take with them uh, into their life kind of thing so yeah i think uh, the, that's the passion I can't really define it because I feel there's so much to explore. Uh like currently like you know we we uh, we've been successful uh, in in creating Asian Ali so far, right? Uh, Asian Ali was chosen um when because you know we brainstorm like so many ideas uh, in the beginning. Uh Asian Ali was chosen out of like um, more than 25 ideas that we came up with uh because it felt like, you know, out of that that uh, list that we had it, it felt like it had the potential to be the most exciting and uh we felt it was right for the market like it it it, it had the the right usps right um so uh if you ask me like uh what can the uh sort of like other teams uh, that I want to do or if I have like a specific team I feel like I don't have one because even in my list currently there's there's a few uh, other stories that that I have in mind that I, you know I I want to uh, create with the team and all these are, are very different uh concepts like different genres right 
Mm. Uh, but of course, at the end of the day, I I feel like it should be a, a story that that um, we as creators are excited to create. It's something that we ourselves want to watch. Uh, should be friendly enough for children to watch because uh, people tend to see animation as as like you know a, a medium that that children would gravitate to and 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 I wouldn't want to uh, single that out right. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, uh, I don't want it to be limited to children. Like uh, I because uh, stories that have moved me, I feel uh, doesn't matter when I watched it when I was younger or now that I'm an adult. It still resonates with me, right? These are uh, I felt uh, are the best stories that that uh, you know stands through the test of time kind of thing. That's evergreen, right? Uh, yeah, and I dream to to keep creating uh, stories that become uh, something that that could be everlasting kind of thing. Uh, well. I'm happy to let you know that uh, Agent Ali, the movie two, which is the second movie, is already in the works right now. Like um, I'm, I'm already working with my team in, in developing uh, the story, the concept, all the pre-production stuff. Uh, hoping to kick off uh, production real soon. Um, and uh, but I'm not at the liberty to to share with you sure. when it will be out yet, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I think uh, we're all looking forward. Plus, uh, you know, as soon as as our final episode for season three drop, uh, people has been bombarding our social media with questions like, "Okay, when's the next one coming out?" Like, even if I post things that are not related to Asian Ali on my social media, people will be <laughs> asking me like when's uh, the, the movie or the next season coming out. So I think um, I- I'm glad to see that the anticipation is there. Uh, I, from, for us, I think it's it's, uh, it's very motivating to see that, that, you know, people want much more of Asian Ali kind of thing. Uh, but other than that, we're also looking for, for uh, new partners to take Agent Ali uh, beyond just the screens, you know, any opportunity for uh, licensing um, and we're lo- also looking to expand our, our merchandise uh, and hopefully uh, rope in some some potential partners to, to do promotional campaigns uh, consumer, for consumer brands and things like that. Um, as for the studio, uh, like I mentioned a bit before, like uh, we we have uh, something in the works that we're developing. Uh, of course, everything is is still in the back end, right? This is still very early, but uh, it's also something that we're excited to announce. Hopefully, uh, sooner than later, maybe this year.